Okay, welcome back. Let's have another go at some hydraulic uh, system fundamentals. Uh, we've been talking about volume the last time, uh, and we're going to put that into a little bit of an application. Uh, we did show you where the, you know, the, uh, the volume uh, and the capacity of cylinders and reservoirs was important as far as knowing how to calculate that and understand how much fluid uh, was going to be needed. Um, but we have a little bit of a different application for it now. And today, uh, or in this lecture, excuse me, we are going to talk about force multiplication. Look, does a pretty good job of this, but I thought I would explain it a little bit more in detail because uh, it seems to trip some of the students up. So basically, force multiplication gives us more force by having a smaller cylinder act on a larger cylinder to, to uh, create a greater force than, than is being applied on the first cylinder. In other words, you've got two cylinders tied together <clears throat> with some type of conductor and fluid in between the two, and you apply a X amount of force, let's say 10 pounds of uh, force on that first cylinder, and based on the pressure that it creates on the system, uh, it can then uh, have the force multiplied to maybe up to 50, 60, even 100 times, or, or uh, up to 100 pounds of pressure based on that 10 pounds of input pressure. So let's talk about that just a little bit. We've got to first go back to this guy, okay, Mr. Pascal, old Blaze here. Uh, Blaze told us one of the things that he, he taught us is that when we apply a pressure, like in this particular example, below this piston, any uh, force that we create on there is going to create a pressure and a force inside this chamber and no matter where you're at in this chamber that force is going to be the same regardless. So if we're putting, uh, we've got this uh, piston going down creating a pressure of 100 psi, okay, that means that every square inch of this is going to be uh, experiencing 100 pounds of pressure per square inch, okay. Even up here in the top around this deck, this larger area right here, it's still every square inch is going to be uh, have uh, 100 uh, pounds of force uh, exerted upon it, and so that's what he taught us. Again, it's, and fluid is non-compressible for the most part. Okay, so let's go back. We had to go back to his principle real quick and see how this works. So basically, like I told you, my opening comments was that when we apply force to a smaller cylinder uh, with a smaller uh, surface area here. We create a pressure that's transferred over here, and like Mr. Pascal said, the pressure in this side of this chamber of the cylinder, uh, and this pipe going over here, and in this side of in this piston, uh, that pressure is going to be the same. Okay, so <clears throat> we are basically, like I said, putting force on here. It's acting on the second cylinder, and we're going to put that into play. One of the things, one of the places you'll see this is, is probably at home if you've got a floor jack has a little pump handle and you've got the, uh, plat the, uh, the uh, part that raises up there um, and, and, and gets up under the car to actually do the lifting, okay? You're picking up, say, a 2,500 pound car and maybe the front end of it or something like that. Well, uh, you're not going to be exerting 2,500 pounds on your, on your arm. You can't, you can't do that, okay? But what we're going to do is use force multiplication to put a small amount of pressure uh, built on this pump on the smaller cylinder and we're going to exert that pressure onto a larger cylinder and we're going to multiply the force. Okay. One Another example that you might uh, see uh, force multiplication is used in your car braking system. You've got a master cylinder here that uh, is acting sort of as the pump. Okay. That's not rotary or any, any, by any means, but we are uh, putting a force uh, on a smaller cylinder and we are causing it to create uh, a greater force on the wheel cylinders out here because you're going to need a lot more force on these wheel cylinders to stop the 2,500-pound uh, vehicle from rolling uh, than you can possibly put with your leg. Okay, it's going to take several hundred pounds per uh, uh, wheel cylinder to bring that car to a stop. You just can't do that with your brake pedal and your foot. You've got to have some force multiplication. And the brake system in a car is a classic example also of force multiplication. So let's get into how this works, okay? So <clears throat> if I have got uh, a thousand pound weight here on top, okay, let's talk about a few of the things we got first. First, we've got a thousand pound weight sitting on top of a cylinder, okay? And that cylinder has a 10 square inch surface area, okay? We already know the area, okay? Well, that means that the 1,000 pounds is going to be divided up over the 10 square inches inside this cylinder, okay, uh, on the surface area, okay? So we divide 1,000 uh, pounds by 10 square inches, and we are creating 100 pounds per square inch. 1,000 divided by uh, 10 square inches is 100, okay? 100 pounds per square inch. Now, if you remember back here, uh, 
we said that that pressure is going to be exerted throughout the entire system, no matter what size the conductor is, cylinder, anything like that, the entire system is going to be um, subject to that pressure. So in this case, we're creating a pressure of 100 PSI. That means 100 PSI here, here, up in this little tube going to the gauge, the connector to uh, the uh, connector um, conductor between the two cylinders and everywhere inside the cylinder is going to be 100 PSI. It does not change because it comes over here, okay? The PSI does not change, all right? So again, 1,000 pounds of, of weight on this. This is sort of, you can, this will be sort of like you pressing down on the jack handle for your floor jack, okay? And we're, that's that small cylinder there and we are creating 100 pounds of pressure right here. So we got a second cylinder, okay? Now, second cylinder is five times the uh, surface area as the first one. However, if you remember, the pressure stays the same. Now, if you remember our formula, okay? If you remember our formula, we had force. The, the force is uh, the area times the pressure. That's what you get for to get force. Well, we've already got the pressure under PSI, okay? We were given the area. This is the area of this piston. Okay, we multiply those two together, and with a thousand pounds of force on this piston, we're able to create five thousand pounds of lifting force on the second cylinder. So that's why you are able to, with a small amount of force on your hand, exert some pressure and build a pressure, build a hydraulic pressure, transfer to a bigger cylinder inside that floor jack and we're able to raise the front end of that car or whatever it is we're lifting. Now, you go to a shop and you see one of those uh, large cylinders down in the floor. You used to see a lot of these You'd down in the floor and they'd raise up. Uh, these were much bigger piston uh, cylinders than, the, uh, than what was exerted on, on the primary side. So that's how you kind of get, that's how you get that, that, uh, that uh, force multiplication, okay? So let's look at it again real quick, and another example. <coughs> And, and uh, also, be, you know, make sure you're jotting these formulas down and, and these examples because you are going to do these uh, in the lab. And uh, that brings up a point: if you got, if you're working problems in the lab, check with the lab instructor to make sure you're doing them right. You don't want to just get an answer for the sake of getting an answer. It needs to be the right answer so you can understand. And a lot of times, answers build on answers. So if you get the first one wrong, everything else is going to be wrong in its place. So it's just a little note there on the side. So when we're talking about our first cylinder. We call that F sub 1, 1 just being the first cylinder, or we can call it the force of the first cylinder. It doesn't really matter, but this is technically how you would say F sub 1, uh, A sub 1, and P sub 1. But uh, the, the uh, force of cylinder 1 is 2,500 pounds, okay? We have an area of 20 square inches. Well, we've got these two, so we can find that one just like that. Force divided by our area, 2,500 divided by 20 square inches, and... That gives us a pressure of 125 pounds per square inch. Now, if you remember, we just talked through talking about this, that's 125 pounds here, here, up to the gauge, in this conductor over to here, and everything in the red here you see below that cylinder, uh, that piston. So we've got, we know our, um, our force and our pressure and our area on the number one cylinder, okay? Well, we also know the pressure on our number two cylinder, all right? So we create another triangle, you know, just for us to be able to do the formulas. So we have, uh, at this point, we know that the, we've got a 60 square inch surface area for that second piston, okay? It's three times the size of the first one. So we've got the 60 right there. We already created the 125 pounds per square inch right here. We got these two, that means we can figure that one out just like that. So we multiply the uh, 60 times the 125, and we wind up creating 7,500 pounds of force by 25 pounds of input force on the first cylinder. In other words, we have 2,500 pounds of force on the first cylinder uh, at 20 square inches creates a 7,500 uh, pound force that the second cylinder can raise or move, okay? So this is force multiplication. And again, you can look see the relationship. The cylinder here on the, the number two cylinder is three times the square the uh, square inch area, or three times the area in square inches of the first one, and it sort of stands to reason that the that the force would be three times the input force, the output force would be three times the output force.
numbers, okay? So that so always stay with your triangle here. This this formula it'll it'll help you figure out everything that you need to know, okay? So there is one you don't get everything for free, okay? Um, you there is one catch. You, the, the distance that you stroke this cylinder here is, for example, if we stroke this cylinder 12 inches, you are not going to get a 12 inch uh, stroke on this cylinder because the volume that we figured out last time, okay, the volume and the capacity are different, okay. So our volume, this volume, has to be uh, spread out over 60 square inches. So it's not going to stroke the cylinder up as much as this one is coming down. In fact, it will be about one third uh, that distance. So if we stroke this this uh, number one cylinder at 20 square inches, so suppose we just uh, stroked it 12 inches, we we press down 12 inches, then this one's going to raise about one third or four inches of, this, of uh, travel, okay? So, you know, you're going to get more force multiplication, but you're going to get less travel uh, in that second cylinder. Okay, and again, this is why you got a, you got a smaller master cylinder uh, that's going to be providing fl fluid to four uh, either brake drum or, or uh, disc brake uh, calipers. And these, cylinder, these uh, caliper, uh, the diameter of these pistons in the caliper are much bigger than the diameter of the uh, master cylinder here that you're pressing on. So uh, we want to make sure that we don't have, we don't over uh, stroke this, you know, and so our, our pistons are smaller, and, I mean, are larger in diameter, and, but they move less, but they also exert uh, much more power than we're giving on the brake pedal through force multiplication. There you go, that's an example. Uh, as well as now you understand how it is you're able to raise that vehicle with the, the hand, um, the force of your hand uh, on, a, on a lever uh, and be able to, to uh, lift up a load much, much heavier. But anyway, that wraps it up for this one, okay? Um, make sure you're reading your book. Um, I had some students uh, ask me about a quiz uh, and said, uh, you know, that wasn't in your lecture. Uh, well, I'm not going to read the entire book to you up here in these years. I'm hitting the points that you really need to understand and drive. I'm trying to drive home, okay? I could let you just read the book and take quizzes and all that stuff, but we're not going to do that. I'm really trying to help you learn. So that's why I break some of the more difficult stuff down. So the, and these are fundamentals, but I want you to get a good grasp on them. So, yes, you have to you know, take notes during the lecture, uh, practice these formulas, uh, come to lab and do the work because that is critical too. And also, uh, you know, you're going to read your material in the book as well. And any of that stuff you don't understand, you got lots of resources to help you out. But for right now, that's going to take care of lesson three. And we will see you, uh, I guess, for the next lesson when we're going to be getting into pneumatics. Again, get in touch with us, anything you need, and we will talk to you later. Thanks. Hope you're having fun.